Hello, it's Monday, it's Trevor Cutmore, and time for my next video. Now, thank you uh, for everyone who has put comments on my videos, especially for last week. Uh, last week was the first of a little taste of my story and my journey from coming out being a chef, doing community development work, and for going into property and what my motivation for going to property was. Um, I give you a little snippet each time of my journey and uh, the lessons that I learned. Although um, my draft for my very first book is out now, which I'm reading through, and my first book will be out, I would think, within the next two or three months. So I'm quite excited about that. And a lot of those stories and more is, is gonna be in those, as well with some great tips and secrets uh, for property investors and really very much to help people avoid making mistakes. Hence, uh, these videos is to help you to avoid. And if you watched last week's one, you'll see that I bought uh, two properties without seeing them. Uh, big no-no, never, never do it, okay? So um, really what I was gonna go on to was to talk a little bit about options and what I actually did uh, when I, first of all, I bought those two properties down in Cornwall, I became uh, very uh, stressed financially because now I had two mortgages, I had to pay two um, council taxes on top, the, um, uh, the, there was no money coming in from the rent because we had to keep going back to court, and not just that, we were getting charged for cleaning bills, for um, site fees, thousands of pounds of bills were coming in every few months. So as I said before, motivation pain seems to be the strongest motivation, not always. Something which is absolutely fantastic to drive you, to pull you towards it is fantastic. But many other people I'm working with, I always ask them, what is your motivation? And I can quite often tell if they're going to do what they say they're going to do or not. And that comes down to what your reason why is. And if your reason why is strong enough, whether it's strong enough to pull you towards it or pain to run away from it by doing what is necessary, I can tell if those individuals are going to be successful or not. And quite often I will sit and talk to people and I would uh, say to them, I'm sorry, but your reason why is not strong enough. So, you know, they reassessed and they, they looked and then they found exactly the motivation that they need. So that's really important in your own journey. Um, let me just tell you a, a little snippet of uh, when I gave up chefing and I went into community uh, development. Uh, I, I told a little bit last time, but it was a, another lesson of growth. And this is something that you all need to understand is whatever job you're doing, whatever skill or, or area of, of work that you're doing, there's transferable skills. So um, many of you know that as a young man, I was, I was bullied. There was a, a judo expert, uh, Brian Jacks, who changed my life. And not only that, I went on to represent Great Britain in martial arts, and I did a lot of other martial arts. I trained in weapons and all sorts. I loved it. I loved the discipline of, of controlling my body and movement and the, the power that can be generated. So even in my golf, I hit quite a, a long ball because I understand the, the motivation and the sequence to connect. And all this is very important and, and, and transferable over to property. If you understand sequencing and what needs to happen, especially even in conversation and negotiation, uh, that's a really, really powerful place to be. However, when I started as a community development officer, I was in this area and there were some gangs lo locally and they were causing some, not massive issue, but there were some issues around um, uh, um, damage, graffiti, normal things, things being smashed and upset and threatening behavior with gangs, etc. So I, you know, left my work as a chef and I went into this quite green. All I had was my my knowledge and my life experience. And obviously understanding martial arts, which I didn't tell anyone about that. But I also, I went out and I was speaking to the young people. And this thing happened one night. I went out, I was looking to interact with the community and there were these kids out in the street, you know, kids, you know, 15, 16, 17, this sort of age. 
and I went out to see what they had and there was no youth centre, there was nothing really for them to do and uh, you know there's a, there's a phrase you know the, the devil makes uh, work for idle hands and uh, you know a lot of it if you've got nothing to do the playground is your community and so quite often someone gets upset because you shouldn't be playing there. So anyway, I go out and I'm speaking to them and I've got a, a, this uh, few lads there and there's a group of them, about six or seven of them. And uh, I'm saying, you know, what do you do at night? And, uh, you know, would you like a youth centre? Would you like go go-karting and that? But there was this big guy there and he started shouting and swearing. I mean, calling me all sorts of uh, very, very nasty names. And eventually I turned to him and I said to him, look, I'm sorry, but, you know, when I was young, you, you know, you either say something or you... You, you punch him I said so mate honestly can you either stop talking or if you really want to just punch me you know and um, so I sort of gave him a green light and he launched this massive punch over to which I basically knocked it down and the other one comes through like that so it, like this okay oh it looks like Bruce Lee now on camera anyway so it's just a knock down and through and I just touched his throat I didn't hit him at all but I just stopped there and they've all stood back and go whoa what's that now, what have I just done? Um, yes, I, I did go to him in, if you really want to know. But out of that, all of a sudden, I'm their best friend. They've asked me, you know, can I show them? I didn't go in to show them how to fight. I was invited to join two gangs to be their gang member. Okay, but what was the key thing? I found a language that I could connect with them. Now, in negotiation with director vendor or with agents, this is simply the most important thing that you can do, is to find the connectability, that key thing that ties you, connects you, through language, whether it is sport, whether it's through martial arts, whether it's through jewellery, whether it's through grandchildren, furniture, cars, whatever. Find a common interest that is gonna connect you verbally to a place of power especially when you come into lease options, all right? And this short video is really going to go on to the very first deal. So I did my training, a one-day training with Sarah about many, many years ago, back in about 2008, nine. I can't remember. And then I went on to a mentorship program and uh, with Progressive Property with Robert Mark um, and, uh, and, and did very, very well. But I had a one-day training with Sarah Barrett and then I read a book, how to Create Multiple Streams of Income by Peter Conti, C-O-N-T-I. I read that and I had a mentor and within three weeks I had my first deal. And let me tell you, I'm a confident person, but I've gone in doing my viewings, I've, I've done my adverts, my postcards, my newspaper adverts, so I was getting a lot of calls direct to vendor. I'd gone in, I tried to buy this house as always. That's what I was taught, try to buy everything. There's a price that you can pay, do it in a clever way. It got refused and they told me how much their mortgage was. Well, I couldn't buy it at that. And I remembered, oh, it's one of those things. It's an option. And I kid you not, my, I started to have butterflies. Now, that's a strange place for me to be. I, I, I don't get nervous. So I thought, but the thing is, when you start to talk some, about something that you don't know, you get nervous. So I started to say, oh, look, there is another way that I can buy your property, but it's over a longer period of time where we would have a legal contract drawn up that would give me control over your property, that would allow you to move on, and then I will rent your property out and I agree to buy it in a few years' time, which is close to, to your asking price. Is the, would you be interested in this? And that's it. That's my fishing rod. And I learned enough to say that. Now, the structure of it, I didn't know fully. And the, uh, one of them said to me uh, a question. I can't remember what it was. It was something like, what happens if you die? And I did not have a clue. So what did I say? I said, look, um, I'd rather not give you the wrong information. I would check that with my associate uh, who deals with that side of it. And I'll call you back uh, within the hour and let you know. But look, if we are going to, uh, going to go forward, and I believe you're quite interested, aren't you? Close question. Yes, we are. Fine. In order for us to do it, I need you to redecorate your bathroom. I need you to fix the kitchen uh, tiles, which are cracked. They need to be replaced. And around the fireplace at the hearth, that needs to be fixed as well. Now, what did I get them to do? I got them to do the minor refurb that I needed on the property that I wasn't going to do. 
And when we did it, I went out, I phoned my mentor, I said, Dave, Dave, please, what's the answer? And he said, Trevor, it just forms, it goes into a state, it carries on running, fine. I phoned them back up within half an hour, I said, look, I, you know, yes, I, I would have been right, uh, it forms part of our estate, of my own estate, and it would carry on running, and the option would still be with my family and my, or in my company, whichever way we, we go through. So they said, no, that's absolutely fine, and I got the deal, the very first one. And that one, we were making uh, £400 a month cash flow. I mean, it was just over £400 a month on the very first deal. That actually paid my VIP in year one. Okay, that was the first one. And then I've gone on. And since then, not just, I don't really do the long-term rents now. It's purely assisted sales, which is another another thing all right and that is basically where you find someone that wants to buy it i'm having a look at one in london this week uh, i'm going down to look at that where i would be putting in the money for the refurb we agree a percentage uh, a, 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 a purchase price that they will have then it gets sold they get their money i get my money and we can share the profits at an agreed percentage and that is very very powerful so listen I really hope this has been useful. It's just a short video again to give you a few tips. Please don't underestimate what you have already. Now I have mentored over probably 500 um, property investors now personally. And I've got to say to you, uh, the amount of times that I see people try to reinvent and try to be the next you know, uh, guru or, or model themselves on someone in property, which they see is fairly high up and I want to be just like them. No, be just like you. Take what you have, take what you've learned and apply it and make it your own. Because if you try to do exactly as I do and speak like I do or try to put things in the same way, it's not gonna work, it's not. You need to be you. Find your own thing, find, take the lessons that you're learning from myself and from others, put it into your personality and let it be natural, genuine, and my best advice is to be truthful at all times. All right. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this video this week. I, I wish you all the best. Remember, persistence, persistence, persistence is the key. Last little story. Very great man, Dr. Ed Louis Cole. And I had the pleasure of meeting him. He Sadly, he's passed away now. But he was the top salesman in a company in America Okay, uh, at the end of the year. Very highly successful. And he, he was asked, you know, how can you be the number one of the, you know, in all the American uh, branches across America and you're number one? What is your secret? Oh, he said, that's easy. He said, look, he said, 50% of salesmen give up after the first try. He said, 75% give up after the second try. He said, 99% give up after the third try. He says, I never give up. He said, and I learned that lesson. So look, it took me seven months to get an option deal. Why? Because the lady said no. I knew it wasn't dead because she, she wanted to sell. She couldn't get the right price. So it went in my phone. One month, call her. All right? The alarm goes up. I phone, Jean, how are you doing? I'm really, you know, how are you doing with your, your property? Can I help you at all? No, no, thank you. I remember you. Thank you very much. And the next month, Jean, how are you doing? How's it going for you, etc. And do you know what? After seven months, she said, look, come on, you can have it now. You prove them to me. Persistence, persistence is the key. Don't be a stalker. Don't get it wrong. Polite, gentle, always offer help. All right, not, I want your property. I want your property. No, not like that. Do it properly, all right? I hope you enjoy it. I look forward to your comments. Please subscribe. If you've got groups, if you're in WhatsApp groups or whatever, please share my YouTube channel, because I'd, I'd like to get more people. I'm nearly at 500. I'm trying to race someone to 500, and then I want to go on. But if you find them useful, please share um, the link to my YouTube channel on your WhatsApp groups or uh, Facebook groups. I'd really, really appreciate that to help me grow and, and to get further across. And lastly, if you're interested in the mentorship or the uh, training that Leslie Tao and I deliver, which is in lease options, buy, refurb, refinance, rent to rent, and rent to service accommodation. I do touch on development. Please drop me an email and we will send you the details. God bless you. Bye bye.